Hey, it's Matt from uh, RCC Rapid Creek uh, here at Wilson's. Today, talking a little bit of like uh, food history and recipe. Jamaican jerk or jerk seasoning is uh, something that um, I've always loved and I'm always surprised I don't see it in more restaurant menus. What we're doing today is talking about the history of it, but also talking about a good recipe that I've kind of worked on for a marinade for any kind of meats off the grill or like slow smoked or roasted meats. The origins of jerk seasoning come from Jamaica. The thought is that the Maroons, the descendants and the freed slaves, the Spanish colonists freed the slaves when they got to Jamaica, they went into the inland and they met up with some of the local native tribes who were jerking meat. So the jerk idea is that it's, it's the tool used to poke holes in the meat so the marinade gets in there but it's also like jerky, you know, like, like long cooked meat that's kind of tough and uh, pulled. So it's kind of a mix of those two things. So they uh, met up with, you know, the inland tribes and they learned this skill and they were using the, you know, the allspice berries in the mix and all the local Scotch bonnet chilies. And the allspice berry is the berry from the tree that traditionally is used to smoke or roast the meats in the fire. So that's where that flavor comes from. Allspice is kind of like that warm fall flavor, a little bit of a pepperiness to it as well. It kind of pushed out into the different parts of the Caribbean, so you can find those flavors mixed throughout. To find out more about these things, you know, you can really go back in time and read some great uh, books. The real go-to for me is this book by Enid Donaldson. It's called The Real Taste of Jamaica. It's one of those books that you might just pass over in the used bookstore um, and not think much of it, but it really is kind of the Jamaican food Bible, mainly for home use. You know, it's got some of these like funky 80s, 70s pictures in it, but it's pretty exhaustive in terms of um, what it's gonna tell you about different parts of the island, different origins of the food, um, and the recipes that are used to this day. I think she might have one or two other books as well, but this is really the one that I go to. We did a Jamaican dinner years ago, and this was kind of uh, really helped me through it to learn a lot. But so I was talking about how it's expanded. There's a book called High in the Hog. Jessica Harris came out probably 10, 15 years ago, and I, I got it and loved it then. It's a history of all the food that the slave trade brought over from Africa. She talks exhaustively about it, but an easier way to get this information too is there's a new Netflix limited documentary series called um, High in the Hog, which is moving and really great. Um, and there's definitely discussions about how the slave trade influenced uh, Jamaica and all the islands in that part of the world and the new world as well, the Southeastern United States going forward. The other kind of interesting influence is um, there's something called like Florida cuisine, at least when I was growing up, kind of learning how to cook in the late 80s. And there were some, honestly, mainly white chefs who had taken some of that Caribbean cuisine and kind of made it into their own thing in Florida in the high-end restaurant world. It was kind of the first time that I think a lot of people saw that. People like Norm Van Aken and Alan Susser was a big one too. So those are kind of interesting ways to see how the original great Jamaican jerk and Jamaican food moved over into the U.S. and had a big influence on what we cook now in the southeastern United States, had a big influence on all the barbecue that we see now. So when you're making this marinade, it's always gonna have a lot of allspice in it. The classic flavorings would be the allspice and the scotch bonnet chilies. Scotch bonnets are about as hot as habaneros. I think it kind of goes back and forth. People, Some people say that scotch bonnets are uh, hotter than habaneros. I think they're about the same heat, but I do think a scotch bonnet has a little more fruit to it, a little more of that nice sweetness. It always has a lot of garlic and thyme is big in there as well. Nutmeg or mace or both. Um, some people do a little sugar. I do a little bit of brown sugar. Some people don't. Onion, always in there. Scallions, always in there. Allspice, classic, and some kind of hot chili. Again, I used Scotch bonnets because I got some from my local farmer here just yesterday morning. A little bit of oil to kind of spin it all together. And it's just a puree of all those things mixed up and marinated on meats. Chicken is kind of the classic one, but also there's pork as, as well. We do a Jamaican jerk lamb shoulder here because we raise the um, sheep and it's delicious. And so once you're gonna make the marinade, like I say, in the blender or in a um, food processor, you could even just use your knife and chop 
through most stuff and get it into a bowl. I do think it should be fairly pureed though. So if you're gonna do that, make sure the onions and garlic and uh, chilies get cut fairly small. Um, I like to put like, if I have a small piece of meat, whether it's like a piece of pork loin um, or a half chicken or a chicken breast, I'm gonna put that in a Ziploc bag. It's a really clean, straightforward way to do it. Also doesn't mess up your fridge. So I get that into a Ziploc bag. I put the marinade in there, kind of massage it all around. Get that onto like a plate and put that in your um, fridge. Maybe half chicken would be three to four to five hours, um, and a pork pork shoulder would uh, be overnight for sure. And if you are doing a large piece of meat like a pork shoulder or like a lamb shoulder, uh, you will benefit from making some holes in it to let some of that marinade really, really soak in. And then when you take it out of the bag or out of the marinade, I always like to let stuff come to room temperature before I grill it or roast it makes for a more even cooking throughout. If you take a pork shoulder out of the fridge, you know, that weighs five pounds, and put it on the grill for six hours, the, the outside's gonna be cooking, but the middle takes so much longer to get up to temp because it's starting at 40 degrees or whatever your um, fridge temp was. So I always let things come to temp for a half chicken, maybe just half hours long enough. And then we serve it with pretty straightforward accompaniments, usually like a beans and rice. We got a lot of really good local black beans and some black beans from the West Coast that we really love. And I'll use the gold rice from um, South Carolina, or I'll just use the jasmine rice as well. Um, you could also serve this with some fried plantains or a slaw, uh, maybe something to cut the heat, some kind of like um, fruity um, salad or uh, salsa would be nice. Yeah, that's how you make it, and I, I think you should give it a try. It's a great starting point. You might just think it's jerk chicken or whatever, but like many foods, you start to delve into it and there's just really interesting stories left and right within there. So I would look for this book if you can. You might be able to find it at a used bookstore. And I would look for anything by Norman Van Aken or Alan Susser uh, to find out kind of the history of that style and how it moved into high-end restaurants in the US. And I would definitely either get this book High in the Hog or I would watch the Netflix series because it's fascinating and moving. Give it a shot, easy to do, still kind of grilling season make everybody happy. Thanks a lot for listening.